Welcome back to our YouTube channel and if you're new, please like, share, subscribe and if you're returning, thank you so much for the support, really appreciate it. Yeah, so today we'll be having our first Couch Talk, so this is our first episode of the Couch Talk mm -hmm. and I'm excited, are you excited? Yeah, super excited, I can't wait for you guys to see our guest, so yeah. Yeah, we have an amazing guest for you guys, so stay tuned. Roll the intro. <laughs> Welcome to our channel. Today we have the amazing and genius Phoenix in the building. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So let's get straight into it. Tell us about yourself, where you're from, who you are, what you do, etc. You know, the usual about yourself. Okay. Um, I'm Tato Mudiga. Um, mm -hmm. I perform as Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I am from a small township in Vulovedu called Khapan. Oh, okay. Um, so I grew up there and then yeah so most of my childhood was there later moved to Zanin when i was in high school and then gauteng for varsity and mm -hmm. eventually work so yeah, so, when I up, yeah of course oh of course. boy oh boy <laughs> ah, but you know <laughs> so yeah. yeah where does the name phonics come from i know like there's tato Mika, mm -hmm. and there's phonics no i feel like they're two different people do you think they're two oh. different people um i think i think phonics is is, is a mask to some extent you know i decide how much i want to let people in and mm -hmm. how much i want people to know and and if you get to experience tattoo then that's like the unfiltered version of me you get to see everything yeah yeah and then uh, phonics phonics is you know it's filtered but the name i wish i wish there's like a cute story behind the name but but there isn't um <laughs> it was a very random thing like i just thought i need to get a stage name um and i was going through the dictionary mm -hmm. and yeah, I found this word. I'm like, ah, this word has a nice ring, so let's let's go with it. So you just sat there and like you always you go through a dictionary. So, so I, was, like... <laughs> I was a bit of a weird kid. So like <laughs> that was a thing I did. Like I'd randomly go through a dictionary mm -hmm. and like just find new words and like learn words like that. So even when I like needed a stage name, I mm -hmm. thought where else to look but the dictionary. dictionary. Yeah, so it made sense. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, so. I know like you're Phoenix and Tato, you're a filmmaker, but like, I think let's focus more on the music side now. Um, in terms of uh, your career, what have you been doing? What did you do? What are you currently working on? Uh, what's your space right now? Where do you stand as Phoenix um, at the moment? Yo, there's, there's, a, there's a lot happening. Things are looking up. Mm -hmm. uh, I recently released my EP, mm -hmm. um, my first EP. Uh, and, and I'm working with a few artists. I'm doing Una Rem's EP, mm -hmm. a very interesting project. I'm doing Big Star's album, um, and I'm working with a few other artists. Nice. So, yeah, exciting times. So where do you meet these people? <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of, like, luck. I'm really big on luck, uh -huh. so I think a lot of it is, has just been luck. Like, it happens through coincidence. I, yeah. I think... I think I met Una through his older brother, who I met in an elevator. What? <laughs> yeah, he's also a musician, an amazing musician called mm -hmm. Dundee. Um, and then Big Star, I, Big Star was referred to me, so mm -hmm. I guess they, my work spoke. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I think to some extent it's luck or blessings, whatever you wanna call it. I don't like to believe blessings. I don't, I don't. You, you stand for luck. I'm like luck. <laughs> I'm like it's blessings, hey. For me, like, like, yeah, like I hear you. I hear you. But I there's, like there's, there's bad luck as well. Sometimes things don't go your way. Yeah. Makes sense. So. so I know you were talking about dry water, dry plants. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, this is the EP cover, right? Yes. Not an album yes, cover. EP, EP cover. Yes. Um, we will share the link below in the description box to stream his music. <laughs> but yeah, how's how was the making of it, and what's the response right now with people? Um, so the concept, so some of the music is old, but mm -hmm. the concept is very fresh. So when I thought of like, Laura is an old song, it's a song that was initially done in 2019. Mm. Um, but when I thought of the concept of doing the project, um, it was after like certain encounters that, that have led me to, to look back and try and understand where I come from, mm -hmm. you know. Um, 
I, I recently thought of like the analogy of, of, of a GPS. So for, for a GPS to navigate, it needs a starting point. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, that's what we all need in life. To navigate life, you need to have a starting point. And what's that for you? Mm -hmm. And for me, that's, that's home. That's the people that have come before me. You know, and understanding my people. And in, in understanding my people, it means I understand myself. So this project is a sonic depiction of, of where I come from and who I am. Mm -hmm. and what my journey of awakening looks like. Uh -huh. So yeah, I and I'm so glad like it's it's translated so well. Like a lot of people get what I was trying to do. I didn't think it would. Mm -hmm. Um but but it has and the reception has been yeah. proper. Yeah. Definitely. I mean right now the charts everything I'm a piano and people don't really listen to like they don't get to listen to that like, good music. That's one mm. thing I like about his album. It's like Thank really you. unique and very <laughs> Like, I don't know, it's personal, it feels like personal because he's like very cultural, so like you can tell that he puts in, he's all in it and Thank I you, yeah. really like that. Um, so with that being said, I know like with, art, with us artists, it's like been very difficult during COVID and post. So how has the music been before you during and post COVID? Well, it's not post, but you know. Yeah. So b before COVID, um, that was varsity for me. So I was doing a lot of gigs. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really doing a lot of production work doing a lot of gigs um, and then when COVID happened obviously like the gigs went away right yeah um, but there's been a lot of good that's come from COVID like it's forced me to like look inwards understand myself mm. in the beginning I was very excited I was just like yeah I'm gonna have time to be alone I'm gonna practice I don't have to like link up with people yeah uh, which which I find tiring sometimes I love it I love people but sometimes I'm just like Ish, yeah space, Need yeah, space but, alone. you know I get it. yeah so in the beginning it was exciting but yeah at some point it just started dipping and mm -hmm. it's just like yeah, why am i even here like i was very depressed um and a lot of it for me was like questioning my existence yeah you know, like why am i alive what am i meant to do here um i think even with the project that ties into the project because like I've, I've gotten to answer those questions mm -hmm. and i'm in a lot better space so that was covid uh post I think we are posting. They just won't tell us it's over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, post. I I'm like now doing a lot of studio work, and I'm not gigging as much. Yeah. Um, I gig here and there, which which is completely fine for me. I love creating, mm -hmm. um, and I love seeing people perform stuff I've created. Nice. So I don't necessarily want to be on stage performing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but I yeah, that's that's that. Makes sense. I feel yeah. like. During COVID too, I think I was home and it was very stressful and depressing. So it's it's like one thing people don't really talk about that people mm. went through so much through COVID. So for those who are still going through that, I hope you guys get help and everything will look up. Mm. But yeah, phonics, as we're saying right now, in terms of like your life, I know you are very family orientated and you believe in the culture you know your <laughs> home and everything but now yeah. with the music being dominated in Houting mostly and everything's in the city you know mm. you're now in the city would you ever have a family and kids in the city like um, family values what do you think what, what's your take on that so i'm i'm not a big fan of the city mm -hmm. um i mean my my independence was established here like i got to be my own person when i got here mm -hmm. Um, but I, it's not a place where I'd like to start a family, you yeah. know. Um, I, in fact, I feel a bit sad for the people that grew up here. <laughs> uh, yeah, like life back home is very different. Yeah. Um, like on, on every level, like culturally, um, like economically, like mm -hmm. it's a lot cheaper there. Yeah. Um, so like an ideal life for me would be a life there. And I believe like life is in phases, right? So music is dominant here, but mm -hmm. I don't think how I create music now will be the same in 10 years time. Mm -hmm. So an ideal life for me would be back home and I'd be living music differently, you yeah. know? So ideally I'd, I'd love to raise my kids that side just so they get to experience like the childhood I experienced because that was beautiful. Yeah. And, like, I'm super grateful for that, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I think, same with me. I think once I got to how thing, the busy life, that's when I started being independent and knowing mm. myself. So if I was to go home right now, I'm a different feeler. <laughs> yeah. And here yeah, I'm a different feeler. So I think, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. And yeah. So yeah, besides film and music, what are your hobbies? What do you like doing? 
besides anything that relates to equipment because both <laughs> relate to equipment <laughs> um i don't think i'm living the way i'd like to yeah <laughs> so like i really like adventure so i think things i'd really love to do would be like hiking mm-hmm. camping that sort of stuff like experiencing nature you know mm-hmm. um i don't do that um <laughs> that's something i'd love to something i'm doing as as a hobby is, is probably reading i yeah. i read not a lot but more than something, the average person yeah, okay. i think oh um <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I listen to a lot of podcasts, uh-huh. um, and I watch a lot of dokis. Yeah, th- yeah, watching, like, yeah, yeah, watching, watching so, and reading. Basically. Yeah, yes. So, what's your favorite, like, current, not favorite or previous current book? Uh, I think it would be Ego's the Enemy. Um, it's a book by Ryan Holiday mm-hmm. um, that just talks about ego, as suggested in the title. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love it so much because of, of how it's changed my life and how it's forced me to like change my perspective on things and people and how you engage with people, you know. So like with understanding yourself, you get to understand the next person better. So that, that immediately makes you less reactive. So yeah. you don't easily take offense. And when someone takes offense from something you've said or done, you almost understand where it comes from. You yeah. know? And with understanding, you can apologize. and. So it just helps you move differently. So that's a book I think every person needs to read. I think I should read that. I think you, you should read that too. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> we leave the the title of the book in the description box mm. too. But yeah, coming to our last question, which is the ending of every episode that we're gonna have. If you were the guest, no, if you were the host here and I was mm-hmm. the guest, what question would you have for me? So you're an artist, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> My question would be, um, what what does art mean to you, and what are you trying to communicate with your mm-hmm. art? <laughs> <laughs> so art to me is, I'm not really a talker. I like I, I know I'm doing this, but mm-hmm. I don't like talking. So art for me is a way of communicating. I communicate through audio visuals or mm-hmm. audio visuals because I used to sing. Really? <laughs> not even sing rap. <laughs> but okay. Yeah, so I communicate through that. Like, art for me is a form of communication. So I rather, I don't like reading, but I'll try that book you said I should yeah, read. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so if there was a movie, that's me. I'd rather watch it okay. and not read. So for me, it's a form of communication. I understand it better. And I think I do it because I want to. My communication is awareness. I'm more on like awareness. I want to. Uh, make people aware of their surrounding, what's happening, things that they don't even know about. There's so much we don't know about in terms of mm. culture, like a lot. There's like broad, there's a broad variety of things that we don't mm. know about. So I'm more of communicating awareness through visuals. Okay. So yeah. All right, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we've come to the end of our work episode. Thank you, Phonics, for coming Thank through. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know you have a show actually this weekend. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, I'm performing at Blue Room Headfield on Sunday the 5th. <laughs> yes, it's the 5th. <laughs> yes, on Sunday the 5th of June. Um, I'll be performing there with a few mates. So mm-hmm. it's a six-piece band. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it's going to be like a full-on live, live, live set. Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and share, of course. We'll leave everything that we spoke about in the description box. And yeah, see you next time on the next episode.